So yes, from Sunny Hot Chesapeake. It is a little warm. I think we got really spoiled with those cool temps. So I will, let me get my uh, computer rolling here and I can uh, see the comments when they come up. But I'm glad you are with me today. My name is Colleen Magnus and today is Wednesday, June 14th. So we are in the middle of June and even if it is hot, I think it's supposed to be. Again, we've had a beautiful spring and I could get really spoiled with these cool temperatures. So I come to you live every Wednesday on YouTube sharing my creativity from Stampin' Up! And um, today I'm going to share with you a really cool specialty paper you probably haven't seen. Uh, we have an awesome catalog and a lot of times, um, like it could be well into the catalog and somebody will show me something and I'll be like, where did you find that? And they'll say, oh, it's on page so-and-so. Because there's so much in there, it's easy to miss things. And I don't want you to miss what I'm going to show you today. So I have had um, a great week, an exciting week. I had a great weekend. Uh, my husband and myself and our friends Rick and Debbie went to Woodstock, Virginia for a Woodstock concert. Something we all wish we would have attended in the 60s, but we were a bit too young. And uh, this one was really cool because it was to benefit the homeless veterans. So all the money they collected, they kept passing the buckets, they had a 50-50 raffle. Um, it was great. It was music from 1 in the afternoon until about 11, and it was a bunch of cover bands, but still a lot of fun. They were really good. Everything from, it was Southern Rock, so everything from 38 Special, Blackfoot, Molly Hatchet, Leonard Skinner, uh, proud to say I knew every word to every song, and um, you know, then they even have like an ACDC uh, cover band. Um, they had, who else? Oh, they had Kid Rock. So I never really knew much about Kid Rock. I've never been a fan of his music. It's more of a rap, I think. So I haven't heard it. Um, and I have to tell you, when he came on, I was a little shocked. He has a potty mouth. Um, you know, I just was kind of taken back. But he was there for a good reason. And um, I'm glad that he was there because he too believes in our veterans and um, together they raise a lot of money. So it was fun. And if anybody out there is watching is a veteran, I do want you to know how much I appreciate you. Um, we have never been a military family, but I love our military. We live in a military town. We're right here, right next to Norfolk, Virginia. And I'd never take a day for granted because I know the freedom I have today, it's not free and it did not come easy. There were men and women out there who fought for this and I will be forever grateful. And I promise you, I'll never take a day for granted. So this week, it gets even more exciting because my nephew's getting married. He is getting married Saturday, Preston is, and my sister has three kids, awesome kids, and they never really dated. So she was always wondering, gee, are they ever gonna get married? And um, I was teasing her and said, Carrie, you'll have three weddings in a year. Well, she has two. So Emily's holding out, she's in Tennessee, has a great guy, um, and so I know when she gets married, we'll get to go to Tennessee. So I'm looking forward for that road trip, but Preston is getting married this Saturday, and then Peyton is getting married on November 10th. So today, my Aunt Barbara, we call her Tootie, um, she's coming in from Arizona, and then tomorrow, my brother comes in from Iowa, his daughter comes in from Florida, and uh, you know, it's just a good time when all your family is here and you get to see them. So exciting times, exciting times. So I am going to go ahead and turn the camera down. I will check my comments and I have actually two cards I'm gonna create for you today. Um, the first one I'll create for you so you can see how it's made and then I'll show it to you in a different color. And then I have another one that I've um, changed using some of the same specialty white center paper and we'll create with that. And I hope you love them and that you'll just have to get yourself some white center specialty paper too. So hold on y'all, I'm gonna turn you around and down and get this party started. So here we go, let's see if I've got you in there. All right, so let me check my screen, see who I have with me today. Um, hey, Bren, Bren actually came to our team meeting and it was so good to meet you in person, Bren. Um, Oh my goodness, you're such a blessing to our team. Um, Sarah, hey, it is a beautiful day in Hampton Roads. And Diane, I'm glad you are here. I do agree it's hot. 
but um, I am in the AC in the stamp room, so I'm good to go. Judith, I'm glad you're here. Let me see. Kathy, hello, Kathy. Hopefully you are all having some beautiful weather up north. At Caters, Lynn. Hey, Lynn, Gwen. Oh, my goodness. Thank you all for being here. Oh, Lisa is homesick, so she gets to see me live. Lisa, I wish you were healthy and could just catch a replay, but thank you so much for including me in your day. I hope you feel better after you watch. Um, so anyways, you all, thank you. Ellen Roberts, how are you doing, Ellen? Glad you are here. So we are going to get started, and this is a card that I'm going to make and show you these products. So what you don't know, we have a page in our catalog, and I think it could be kind of confusing. Um, it's one you really have to study. So on page 127 here of this um, catalog page, there's a lot of information and a lot of the papers you just see going around. So actually read it. I'm a visual person. I normally just look at the pictures. But in here, you have some holographic trio 12 by 12 paper. That's over here, which is very cool. I am using the White Center Specialty Paper number two today. That's on the side. Of course, we have gold foil sheets, um, rose gold. We have textured shimmer paper, which is very cool. That's number five. Um, some of the other ones, this here I just purchased, and it came in, and it's real pretty, so you'll be seeing that in the future. And that is number nine. And that is called Luster Specialty Paper, and it's in the in colors. And then, of course, we all love the Distressed Gold. If you haven't gotten that, it's a must. Um, but there's a lot of great product right here on this page. And that is what I'm using. And by the way, I'm sitting here thinking, did I even introduce myself? My name is Colleen Magnus. So I'm glad you're here creating with me today. Okay, so this is the 12 by 12. It's called a White Center Specialty Paper. And it comes in Azure Afternoon. Uh, um, what is that? Berry Burst, Fresh Freesia, Lemon Lime Twist, and Night of Navy. So when you look at it, I don't know if you can see that, it's, you know, beautiful paper, and it kind of has a little bit of a texture to it. Real thin, wrinkly type texture, but it has a white center, and I'm going to show you exactly what that does. But I will introduce you to the products we're using first. The other paper that I'm using, it's on page 15, and it's the Beautiful Balloons Bundle. So this paper is a six by six, and it has a lot of the gray colors that coordinate with the um, white center paper. So you've got your Lemon Lime Twist, Pretty Peacock, which to me is just perfect on its own, Azure Afternoon, Blueberry Bushel, Berry Burst, and then Bubble Bath. So at one side of this paper, it has, let me see here, I don't know if y'all can, I'll just go kind of quick. It has some, um, you know, different designs. But then on the other side, it's more bold, there are a few sheets in there that are beautiful. Um, this is what I'm gonna be using, but this I can stamp on. And then of course, your Azure Afternoon. So these pieces to me go perfect with the White Center Specialty Paper. And let me show you how that's gonna work. So the stamps that I'm using, it's not a bundle, but they coordinate together. This is the Layering Leaves stamp set, and I believe it's Rachel Tessman's stamp, um, but it's a two-step stamp, and of course, you know, I love two-step stamping, but what I got it for that I love the most was the sayings and the fonts. We always need words, and um, this was perfect, and then it has a, a bow punch. It's sold separately, so it's not a bundle, but it's nice because these leaves will punch out those and the flowers, too. So instant gratification when you can punch. Let me give you the um, uh, dimensions and all here. So for the first card I'm making, I got all my little pieces. You're gonna start out with an eight and a half by five and a half sheet of Berry Burst, and I scored it in the middle, so that is my card base. Then you're gonna have three and three quarters by five basic white, and I'm going to use that on my inside. Now this here, this is that specialty paper I was showing you and telling you about, the white center. In order to make it work, it has to be embossed. 
Um, I tried actually scraping it. You're gonna get a sanding block. Um, I don't believe we sell these, but I know you can get them at the um, previous dollar store, which we now call dollar 25 store, because everything went up in price. Um, but it's just a sanding block. I think you can get them in any cosmetic section too. And that's what we'll use to scrape our paper. But since you have to emboss it, I actually used the quatrefoil tile and I thought that turned out really nice for this first card. So that's already done. And that was with the Fresh Freesia. And then here, let me see that. I have, y'all know I love my stylus shapes dies. I don't even know why I put them up because I use them all the time. They were the squares, circles, and the banners with the stitching. They just seem to be my go-to die this year. And also here we have, um, so I've done with the Berry Burst. It's, this was a two and three eighths inch square that I've already punched from there. I have a piece of two and a half inch square of basic white. And then two by two of that bright and beautiful designer paper. So I'm actually gonna stamp on this. And the reason I cut it two by two would be so I could get nine pieces out of that six by six. I originally actually used the um, smaller square, the one down from here, but I just couldn't get it even. I wouldn't get as many pieces. So I think it looks just as nice because we're gonna layer it on there to just do two by two and you're gonna get nine, nine little pieces. Y'all know I always like you to get the most out of your um, cardstock and all that you can. So let me see, Sierra says um, her layering leaves are also on your list for the same reasons. I totally agree. I totally agree, Sarah, and I've really enjoyed using it. So, hey, Charlotte and Renee, you all have popped on, and Terry. Oh, thank you. Terry loves the color combo. Terry, you know, it's really funny because I am, by nature, an Earth Elements girl, and um, I just love everything fall, everything about it. So, when I first was kind of looking at Berry Burst, I was like, oh my goodness, that's a screamer. It's so loud, but it's not. It's beautiful. It just took me a little bit out of my comfort zone. And I'll be very honest with you, that's probably a good thing. So since I have embossed this first, I'm gonna show you how this works. And then you'll see it. I'm also doing a card, different card in Night of Navy. And you'll see more so that white center. But I have embossed this. And so you're just gonna take your sanding block and you want to, oops, I got blue on there. You want to go ahead and drag it on your paper. And what it's doing is it's scraping the color off. I used blue on here, so note to self, try to clean it so it doesn't mess up your pink. Uh, that part looks good. But as I'm scraping this, it makes, you know, little pieces are coming off, so have either a limp brush or, you know, just put it on the table. But it's scraping, can y'all see that? It's like magic. I'm just scraping the tops of the embossed piece. So, see if we can see that, let me hold it up. See how that is now? So it really accents any embossing folder that you're gonna use. Very cool. And now I don't know if I'd mentioned, I tried embossing, um, I'm sorry, just scraping a piece of the flat paper and it pretty much does absolutely nothing. You really have to have it embossed with some type of folder. So now that I have that, I'm just gonna take my berry first. Um, oh, I don't have my bone folder. Okay, use your finger now. Um, gonna take this. Have you not seen this, Bren? Bren said she loved it. Again, it's hidden in the catalog. Um, a lot of things are, because I, again, I just look at the pictures and I run right through it, but there are a lot of neat products that I am gonna be researching and we are going to be using, so stick with me. So I'm just gonna put this over here on the side. Let me make sure that's straight. That's why I love my liquid glue. I can tweak it and move it ever so slightly. So I have the base. Now for, since this is a photopolymer, I do wanna bring in my little paper piercing mat. And I'm gonna actually stamp on here diagonally. So when I was first doing this, I was trying to get a rough idea of which words would fit diagonally. And um, I have it in another box, but what I did is I cut a two inch square in a piece of paper. And then I can hold it diagonally or square 
to actually look on here and see which words fit. But let me tell you, the, the words here are a little bit smaller than the actual stamps. So when you have that, that little hole, you know, or square or circle, whatever it is, use it as a template and put it over your words and see if it fits first. And then you'll know what to use. So I am going to stamp this so it's like a diamond. Look at me, I'm getting all crooked. So I'll take my Berry Burst ink. What paper did you miss? Renee, it is on page, oh, I lost a page. Y'all was telling me it was 172. Let me see. But it is a specialty paper and um, it basically has a white center in it. So uh, let me go back through here. I'm almost there, I believe. Yep. Page 127, not 172. And it is a white specialty paper. It's, it's um, 12 by 12. So the outside was fresh freesia, but when you scrape it with your sanding block and you um, scrape it off, you see the white center. Too cool. So here I will put my thinking of you. That's in my very burst. And then I will just layer that. So this is on the piece of the stylus shapes. Let me just put this on there. Again, I like a liquid glue a lot of times because I can center it up. And then since this was going on here, I wanted to have that little bit of a white background. So that's why I have the two and a half inch square of the basic white. The embossing folder I used, Bren, was um, quatrefoil tile. I'm using a different embossing folder on the second card, but that's called, um, right here, quatrefoil tile. It's really pretty, kind of dainty. So now that I have this, I am going to attach it with my dimensionals, because I kind of like to get this in place, and then I build my flowers and my leaves around it. Let me take these off. Let's see. I know, Gwen said she didn't even see that paper. Gwen, it could be towards the end of a catalog sometimes, and I'm still discovering things. So, that's why it's always good to read the fine print, huh? <laughs> Something I don't often do. So there's my card, the basic of it, but now I'm gonna do the leaves and the um, flowers. So that's where I go back to the stamp set and I'm going to come in with a garden green. Let me put my centerpiece over there so I don't get it dirty. So I'm just gonna take three leaves, the outside of the garden green, and then I should be cleaning these because I'll do different colors on the other card. I'll do that ahead of time. I think on this one especially, and I think with most two-step stamping, I kind of like doing the outline first because it's darker, and then it's easier to see the center of the um, inside when you're putting it on here. So my head isn't completely over this, so close enough will count. But this, I find this really lines up easy. And if you're off just a little bit, just re-stamp it. Make sure you get the little white parts that you missed. So here I have my leaves. And then I'm gonna do some flowers. So with the flowers, I'm gonna take the outline in my very first. And keep in mind, y'all do know photopolymer, you know, it, it does. I'm gonna do three just for a good measure, um, but I'm only gonna use two. But with your photopolymer, it does tend to stain with your, your reds, especially your inks. It's not a problem. It does not hurt your stamps. But if you stamp lightly, it's only going to be on the image. It's when you push too hard into this pad and it gets on the entire stamp and you don't clean it right away that it will stain. Again, no damage is done. Um, but, you know, I know some people, it did bother me a little bit too. Some things just take time to get over, and I'm okay now. So this is bubble bath, and this uh, flower is actually a solid. And it's very, very faint, um, but it just kind of fills in that, 
the center of that leaf. You hardly see it. See how off that one is, so I'll use those two. Um, you hardly see it, but it really does add just that little bit. Then what's so nice is our um, punch. So on the punch, go ahead, do it on a strip. I think it's easier. And then you'll just line it up, get your stem in there. There's one. And two. And then three. And blow that piece out. So I do like a I do like a good punch. I won't lie to you. I like my good dice too, but when you're punching, you don't even have to get up. So there's my three leaves. And then I'll just take my flowers. The flowers are right here. So again, just let me see if y'all can see that. You're just lining it up, get your little stem in there. That's one. And I said, I'll take this one. Line it up, close enough counts. And there's my little pieces to accent my card. So once I have this on here, again, I think it's easier because I can tuck and put the things where I want them. So I'm gonna take my adhesive mat um, so it's not all over my paper. And I do find that it, um, you know, it just doesn't stick to it. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of the stamp and seal on here. Make sure it's not between your leaves. So the first one, I think I'll kind of tuck it in, put it out like that. My second one, I will want to kind of go down the side. And I do want, I like to have like a leaf on here. And then I'll take this last one and put it down at the bottom. Just kind of tuck it in, coming this way again. I like it so that the leaf is there. Then I'll just take my little flowers. This tape is so strong, you don't need a bunch of it, like I just did. Okay, I'm gonna put this on top here. Oops, stuck to my finger. And then this one over here. Now, I don't know, I'm sure you've seen them because I know you've seen me use them. I love the brushed brass butterflies and I really think what I like about them the most, they are a great accent, but they're very light and very flat. So they're not gonna add any kind of a thickness to your card. And y'all do know my trick, right? I usually ask for forgiveness and not permission because if I have embellishments on a card and I go to the post office, uh, William, He'll take that card and he feels, and oh my goodness, it turns from a card to a package in no time. Then of course you're really paying to send your card. So what I do is I send it, period. I don't even see William, I throw it right in the mailbox. And as far as I know, every single one has gone through, and I'm not talking a huge embellishment, but you know, we do have the rhinestones and different things. But the trick is when you slide this into your envelope, take a piece, I always slide it in, I don't have an envelope for a visual, but I slide it into where the front is on the back of the envelope where it seals. And then I just take a piece of clear packing tape and I put it over the embellishment. And this way your envelope doesn't rip and baby, it slides right through that machine and gets to where it's supposed to go. Some people like to add like a piece of cardstock in the envelope, but then you're adding weight and you're adding thickness. So the clear, um, packing tape you don't even see on the outside of the envelope and it'll keep your envelope from ripping. And that is your tip for the day if you learn nothing else. So here I'm just going to put, I love that they have small and large. So there is the front of my card, sweet and easy. And then for the inside, because you always really need to put a little something on the inside. I'm just going to come back in here and I will do one more leaf and put this on here. So a dark leaf right there. So 
So what did y'all think of that little tip? Did you know it? Did you know about the packing tape already? Because I'm telling you, it works. And then here, I'll just put my leaves on. See how easy that stamps? This really is easy to line up. And then instead of just two stamping the flowers, I'm gonna take the solid image, that flower, and I'm just going to put it in here, that little bit of soft pink. It's really pretty. So, Lynn had not heard of that, good. Love when I can teach you something. So now I'll just take my inside. And I'll put that in here. And I would probably, because I do like to stamp my envelopes in the left corner. Um, so what I would do here is um, probably just stamp this image in the left corner of my um, envelope. So that is your first card. Um, oh, good. Y'all didn't know about the packing tape. Try it. Try it. It works really, really well. So this card here, again, this was with the Berry Burst and the Fresh Freesia. And then I also did it for a swap. And this one is in that Azure Afternoon, uh, which is a gorgeous color. So y'all let me know which one you think. I was really torn. Did I like the Berry Burst better or the Azure Afternoon? So give me a shout out and let me know what you think your favorite color is. That'll always help me. I wish you could just create with me in the stamp room when I'm actually doing it from scratch because then you would be right here to help me make those decisions. So let me clean my stamps. And then um, y'all know that this is just one of our clear cases. This was some designer paper I had. Stampin' Up! actually had a convention that, um, in Disney, at Disney. It was a couple years ago. It was actually um, a wonderful, wonderful trip. And I, I had to go somewhere else, I'm sorry, and get the Mickey Mouse designer paper and just slide it in here. And then that's my cleaning pad. So this is our chamois. And it really does work. It looks terrible. Took me a while to get over that, but I did. Um, but man, it works great. It cleans your stamp so well. And all the ink stays in the chamois. It's not like our older cleaning pads where it was like a felt tip and all that. After a while, the ink got in there. And you could remove it and wash it. Um, but with this, you never have that problem. Just rinse it out every now and then, squeeze out the ink, and keep stamping. So when I did these cards, um, what I ended up doing was I wanted to try to cut some shapes and see if I can make a card that way. So let me give you the, let me put all these little pieces out of the way here, and bring the dimensions for my next card. So on this one, y'all give a shout out. Let me know if you like Berry Burst. Remember the Berry Burst or the Azure Afternoon. It's A-Z-U-R-E. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, Azure, 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 Azure. Pretty color, whatever it is. So let me know which one you like. This one, what I'm going to do is I am using Knight of Navy. So here I have Knight of Navy card base, eight and a half by five and a half, and I'm scoring it at four and a quarter. So that is my card base. For my inside, of course, I didn't want it. One's almost too small and um, the other one's too big. So I pulled a three and seven eighths by a five and an eighth. Um, very simple, if you don't like to do an eighth, do a three and three quarters by five. Just gives you a bigger border around the edge and that is gonna be in basic white. I have the um, boho blue, which incidentally y'all, boho blue and night and navy go great together. Boho blue is uh, an in color. And I use the 3D Basics embossing folder. Y'all have seen that before. It's an online exclusive only. So you have to go to stampinup.com slash online exclusives or hit the menu button and you'll see it on there. And it had these three designs. So you have these awesome dots because they look like circles. I mean, they really are 3D. And then you have the flowers, which I also think can be a starfish. And then this beautiful hatching. And since I am a texture person, I tried doing this card with just the flat boho blue and I couldn't do it. 
I had to find me something soft and subtle. So that's what um, I had to put in here. Then I have the two and a half inch circle from my stylus shapes, the white center specialty paper. Then I have the um, stylus shapes Knight of Navy, that's regular cardstock. The Stylish Shapes Knight of Navy regular cardstock and my white circle. And I'm gonna panic in a minute because twice now I have lost, but I found it, the um, center for this um, white center cardstock. Here it is. Man, these things are hard to keep up with. So uh, then I have just one of the two and an eighth inch circles of the Stylish shapes white center specialty paper my goodness a lot of lot to say lot to say so sherry's here today um oh you're new to the channel thanks for watching i appreciate it so much she is in indiana you are amongst a lot of awesome people sherry so i'm glad you're here and i hope you subscribe and i hope you will come back too because i'm live every wednesday at noon eastern time so these are the pieces and I will on my, everything I do is creating with Colleen. So on my creating with Colleen Facebook business page, I took pictures of both of these cards with the dimensions on them. I will post those with the link and this way you can either take a picture or you can go there and look at them also. And y'all know if you don't currently get my newsletter, just go to creatingwithcolleen.com and request my newsletter. You can, um, also, purchase anything you'd like from there, too. So getting back to our card, I'm going to take our card base, fold it in half. I'm going to find that bone folder. Until then, I'll use my fingernail. Um, and here I've got, again, the boho blue that is embossed with the 3D Basics shapes. See, Sherry, they're already welcoming you. I, You know, just the sweetest, best people are here. I love you all, and you know it. So here, I'm just gonna put this on here for the basics, and I am going to take the um, actual just cardstock. This is just the Knight of Navy Circles, and I'm gonna set them aside, and hopefully they won't run off. But I'm just gonna show you really quick um, how I embossed these in case you're new to Stampin' Up. So Stampin' Up has an awesome die cutting machine and you can emboss with it and you can use our dies to cut with it. It folds up, which is nice. And here, this is a machine. You get a series of different plates with it. You get the base plate, a thin plate, and then two acrylic plates that you can use. Um, but when you have a 3D embossing folder, which is a thicker one, you have to purchase the number four plate. I think it's only $10, but it's the right thickness for the 3D folder. So I'm just gonna throw the white specialty paper circles in here. I can do them both at one time. Always make sure your sides are even and then just crank her through. It's very smooth. You think it's not doing anything, but in reality it is. So now that I have these two pieces embossed, I will take my paper here and my sanding block, and you'll be able to see it a little bit better on the Knight of Navy, because of course it's such a great dark color, but what it's doing is it's scraping off the um, Knight of Navy and you're seeing the center of that paper. So again, just get you a little, they call it a sanding block or a buffing block, either one. So that's my first piece and make sure I got them nice and bright. And then I'll do the small one. So think of all the embossing folders that you have in your possession and think how pretty a lot of them would be. I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need, got to stop bending it. Um, even like, oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start. I think it would work with every single embossing folder. And again, you get a bunch of different colors. So here, put that there, quick blow. 
and it's clean. Um, so here you have your pieces. And it is a thin paper, so don't have a heavy hand when you are scraping it with your little block. Have a light hand and just know you can go over it as much as you want. So I kind of wanted to do something different because I, being the drafter I was, I'm very symmetrical. Um, so I kind of wanted to, you know, my idea was, oh, let's just take, you know, this one and mount it on here. But then I felt like that was too big of a border. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to, let me get my little adhesive sheet here, my um, glue mat. And what I'm going to do is like for this big one, those are both the same size, but I'm going to take my liquid glue and put it on a good part of this. And I'm going to offset my circles. Getting out of that comfort zone again today, right? So here, I'm offsetting that, where you just kind of see it off on the one side. I'll put it aside there. And then I'm gonna do it again with this one. Just to go for a different look. Okay. And I'll put that down. And then to put them on my card, I think I will put this one, get it on the card stock, but then also get it on the part of the specialty paper. So this will sit really flat on your card. Oh, Bren, you're absolutely right. Bren said this would be really cool, and I totally agree, um, with a embossing folder. And I was thinking too, Bren, like the tree folders we have, um, that would be cool. I mean, really, it's it's endless what you can do. So I kind of put that one. My original one, I put it too far, so hopefully I'm not doing too far on this one. Well, it's stuck there, so that's where it's going to be. And then I'll put this here. So this I'm going to kind of have my Knight of Navy going the other way. Again, just kind of creating this little geometric picture. When you have something like this, turn it over. You never know if you have ink on your hands um, or whatever. Yes, Lisa, it is like a nail buffer. Exactly what it is. It's a sanding block, so I think it's a little harder than a um, nail buffer, but I'm sure you can find them in the, um, you know, Beauty Aids section of the stores. I am going to go looking for them, so I can definitely let you know. These, I've had these for years. And I don't even know if I could tell you where they came from, but I know they're still out there. So I have those two, and then I'm going to take the um, Thinking of You, and I'm going to take the Knight of Navy. Just gonna stamp it in my circle. And I'm going to offset that on another circle. So we're all wonky on this card. But I do need to stop thinking so, so literal as far as um, everything just having to be even. So I have this here. Um, okay, so Kathy was saying, let me see. First, um, Judith said, if you tear that paper, are the edges nice and white? We're going to find out, Judith, because I have a scrap piece. Um, Kathy said, the paint department or hardware store, bigger blocks that you can cut. Oh, good to know, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Renee, Renee said she wishes she could cut that, um, could stamp that straight. Let me tell you, Renee, circles are the best thing to stamp because if you stamped a crooked like this, all you got to do is rotate your circle. It's perfect. It's a little less forgiving on the diamond, um, but a circle, circle works every time. Let me grab that scrap piece of paper. Um, okay. So this looks junky. This uh, was where I cut on my circles. So let's see if we tear it. Normally when you tear it, you kind of, oh, look at that. 
That's cool looking. So yes, depending on how you tear it, um, you can get a really cool white edge. So you could have embossed this, scraped that top off, and then you would have your edge. Mm. Now we have something new to try. Awesome, thanks Judith. We will be doing that. So for this here, I am going to do my dimensionals again. And normally on a circle, I do what looks like a triangle. And I'm gonna put, you know, so my white part also stays up there. And I'm glad you asked that question. So you can turn it and it looks very, tear it and it does look very cool. So then I will just take this, put it off to the side. And then we have these beautiful, um, they're called the 2023, 2025 in color dots. So that boho blue is in here. Take this and let's just add a couple of these. I really wasn't sure where to add them all, but I can put one like down here. I have, it's nice, it's a small, medium and large size. So let me use this properly. That works much better. I want, do wanna put one on the white and then I could take a medium and just kind of put it at the top here. Oh, good gosh. All right, back to this. Needless to say, these things stick pretty good, huh? Okay, so that is my front. So now you know you can take this white specialty paper and cut shapes. So think of all the dyes that you have and all the possibilities that you have going on there. Now I didn't stamp it inside, so we'll kind of just do a take on the other one. I really think, um, thinking of you, and you don't know why you're thinking of them, so let's put sending hugs. Sometimes everybody needs a, a hug and a kind word. So we're gonna send some hugs and let them know we're thinking of them. And I'm gonna keep it monochromatic um, since we are dealing with all the blues and I wasn't sure what this will look like, but we're gonna give it a try. Then I will put my blue there. I'm gonna come in with the boho blue. Cause y'all know I love that the inks met, you know, coordinate with the card stuff. Um, oh my gosh, just, you know, the ribbons, everything coordinates, which is really what separates your Stampin' Up! card from any other card that is made. So I'll do the light. Probably should have stamped off, but I'm gonna leave it. If I stamped off, that'd have been a little bit lighter. And then I'll just come in here with some of the boho blue little flowers. Oh yeah, I like it stamped off better. Wish I'd done that with the leaves, but it is what it is. But as my dear friend Malvern says, it may be what it is, but it'll be what you make of it. And we're just gonna call it done. So here, oh yeah, so Lisa's saying the waves. Ooh, Lisa, that's awesome. I like the way you think. And of course you have that azure blue and you have the Knight of Navy. So that's gonna go perfect with your waves. So this is your white center specialty paper. Lots and lots of fun. So again, I want you to put your thinking caps on, your creativity caps. Think of what folders you can use with them. Think of what um, dies you can use for shapes and then have so much fun stamping. So I have some specials I do wanna tell you about. Um, Oh my goodness, where do you start? Y'all do know that the designer series paper sale is going on through June 30th. So you have a, um, an assortment of designer series papers that are 15% off. And this will go again through the end of June. So, and I put it in my newsletter. I'm getting ready to get, send another newsletter so you have it again. And then we also have, y'all know every kit. And I think I'm gonna start focusing on some kits and try to do a second YouTube live um, for the week because doing specialty cards are great, but kits are also great. If you wanna travel, you have everything you need. If you're a beginner stamper, they are absolutely wonderful and you see them online. So um, when you go to creatingwithcolleen.com and then you hit shop now, you'll see where it says me uh, menu and then you can select kits. 
They've categorized everything because the kits are not in a catalog. So the June kit, I don't think, I don't know if you can see that. I am gonna get it. Um, it's enough supplies to create eight cards for each of two designs and it's called Boho Beach. So the colors are, you know, just, you've got your, um, oh my God, I can't think of it. The beautiful colors that you have here, crumb cake, oh my goodness. And um, you have these little umbrellas, you have the beach chair. And so you get the Boho Beach photopolymer stamp, which is this right here. You get eight coordinating envelopes, a pecan pie ink spot, the bases, the envelopes, and here we go, just didn't look far enough. See, I, I told y'all I don't read the fine print. The coordinating colors are Crumb Cake, Lost Lagoon, Pecan Pie, Pool Party, and Wild Wheat. So this is a great, makes a great gift because this is an all-inclusive kit. So it has everything you need from the stamp set to the clear block to the little um, uh, pecan pie spot to stamp with. And the kit is $22. Uh, so great gifts are great if you're a beginner stamper. Paper Pumpkin. I don't talk enough about Paper Pumpkin, and I should. Paper Pumpkin is a monthly kit that you can get. And to see um, the pricing on Paper Pumpkin, it's actually in the beginning of the catalog. So if you turn to page 13, you can do a monthly subscription where you go online, you create your account, put your um, credit card in there, and then every month you automatically receive it. If you just wanna try Paper Pumpkin, you can do a one month, a three month, six or 12 month subscription. And what's nice about that, I typically do like a three or a six month subscription. And although you don't know what the kit is for the month, they give you enough to kind of let you know. Like sometimes they'll do little craft boxes. And if I don't need any kind of little treat craft boxes, then I, I just suspend that month and it goes to the next month. But this one I'm definitely getting uh, this is Fun in the Sun, and it says, Say hello to summer and get crafting under the sun with this month's kit. The Fun in the Sun Paper Pumpkin Kit includes fun beach designs, along with positive words of kindness you'll want to use and share with those you love all summer long. So take your cards to the next level with the fun summertime theme and accordion folds. That's where they got me, y'all. Little special folds in there that are in this kit and send friends and loved ones uplifting cards to support, encourage, say hello, and more. So that kind of gives you an idea of what this kit's gonna be. I think it's exciting that you don't know exactly what it is till it arrives, um, but it, then it will tell you. The supplies uh, that you get, you're gonna create nine cards, three each of three designs. They have coordinating envelopes. You get the all occasion stamp set, uh, pearlescent backed sequins, summertime emperor, em Femora pack, I knew they were gonna throw a big word in there on me. Pre-cut dies and one Daffodil Delight stampin' spot. So I think we're gonna to have to really start exploring these kits because they're doing an amazing job at stampin' up. And last but not least, um, we have that starter kit special. So what the starter kit special is, is you select $155 in product. You will only pay $99 and there is uh, no shipping. So it's a great deal and you select those products from the annual catalog. You can include any of the kits and you can even include the designer series papers that are on sale. So it's just a great way to get a lot of product and you become a part of Stampin' Up and part of my, um, I, I call them a team, but they're really my Stampin' family. So anyways, if you're ever interested in that, let me know, I'm here to support you. There's never an obligation to purchase anything else. This, everything in this kit is yours to keep. And, um, but if you do, you will save 20% on everything you purchase. So you can contact me through uh, creatingwithcolleen.com. Let me know if you have questions. And I hope you enjoyed today. I enjoyed having you here. Kathy, you are certainly welcome. She's off running her day. Have a great day. And for the rest of you, I am running too. Um, taking a friend some dinner tonight. She had been ill. Danny is going to pick up my aunt from the airport and we're all going to mama's house for spaghetti tonight. If you ever had her spaghetti, you would wish you could come to. So until then, I will see you next Wednesday on the 21st, noon Eastern time. And I hope you all just have a wonderful blessed week. Uh, those who are uh, not feeling well, I hope you, Lisa, I hope you heal quickly. And um, Sherry, thank you for joining us.
May God bless you all, and I will see you next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.